Ciao, mabuhay. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are on the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and today's Gospel presents a familiar exchange between Jesus and the religious leaders of His time. The Pharisees and Herodians asked Jesus, Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus knows that whatever his answer, it will be used against him. So he asks for a Roman coin and tells them, Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. Through this, Jesus is teaching us to see things according to their proper context. Do we conflate the kingdoms of this world with the glory of God? First reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him, and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him, and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. The Word of the Lord. Give the Lord glory and honor. 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 Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Tell His glory among the nations, among all peoples, His wondrous deeds. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give the Lord glory and honor. The Lord and highly to be praised. Awesome is He beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught. For the Lord made the heavens. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory to His name. Bring gifts and enter His court. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give the Lord glory and honor. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before Him all the earth. 
Say among the nations, the Lord is King. He governs the peoples with equity. Give the Lord glory and honor. 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 Second reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers. Unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love, an endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ, before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen, for our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power. And in the Holy Spirit, and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. The glory due to God. The responsorial psalm for this Sunday reminds us that to God, to our Lord, is due glory and honor. Now, for many of us. This may sound、uh, like redundant. Why do we even have to say that? Of course, God deserves all of our praise, all of our thanksgiving. We give God all the glory. But our readings remind us that while that could be part of our notions, in real life there could be some blocks to giving God. The glory due to Him. In the first reading, we have the figure of the king of Persia, Cyrus. This is quite a revelation on the part of the prophet, telling Cyrus, king of Persia, who somehow conquered. Uh, uh, Babylon and all the、uh, the surrounding countries, and started an empire. But one of his acts, surprising acts, was to liberate the Jewish people who were sent on exile in Babylon. So this Persian king became sort of a benefactor of God's people. And in the first reading, we hear God communicating to Cyrus, telling him that you are a great king. Your kingdom extends to oh so many lands, and you do not know me. It is one way of saying you do not belong. To the people who recognize me, you're not part of what we call the chosen people. But even if you do not know me, I know you. I was the one who called you. I was the one who gave you the title of king. And I was the one who guided your decisions, especially this decision. To be just to people, to restore people, 
to their religious, national, and cultural heritage. You do not know me, but I am the mind, the heart, the hand behind your power. And God reminds Cyrus that through Cyrus, we hope that all the nations will recognize from the rising of the sun to its setting who the true God is. Now, this is not boasting on the part of God. God is telling Cyrus the truth. And God is reminding all people who wield earthly power that they should recognize the source of all power. Even if they did not know it, it was God who has entrusted to them the power, whatever power they have. And they should use that power to glorify God. How? By being just, by being fair, by respecting peoples. So that through their exercise of authority, people may know. People may start asking the question, where did this person get this power? And hopefully, they will give glory to the real source, to God. To God be the glory. To God be the honor. And we hope that the kings and those who wield power on earth will be the first one, the first ones to glorify God, who is the author of all authority. Now, if this is true of Cyrus and the other kings and, and the kingdoms of this world, we see in the second reading in St. Paul how this is true also of the apostle. St. Paul, in his letter uh, to the Thessalonians, was very clear about his mission. And whatever power or authority he exercised as an apostle was not his. In fact, the people that was formed by his preaching is God's people, not Paul's people. They are God's people, living in faith in God, hope and love, all generated by God. St. Paul recognizes that the message that he shared with them, the gospel, is not his word. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And being the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of this message came from the Holy Spirit and not from human wisdom. St. Paul, who in some ways, could be considered a powerful person. You know, as far as the number of Christian communities that owe their existence to his work and preaching, he knew very well the glory is not his. He is a servant. He was chosen. He was sent. And all glory should go where it is due to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We hope earthly leaders and leaders in society and even religious leaders will have this humility. The honor is not ours. It is due to the one who has given us this calling with authority and with mission. Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went off and began to plot 
how they might trap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him, accompanied by Herodian sympathizers who said, Teacher, we know you are a truthful man and teach God's way sincerely. You court no one's favor and do not act out of human respect. Give us your opinion then in this case. Is it lawful to pay tax to the emperor or not? Jesus recognized their bad faith and said to them, Why are you trying to trip me up, you hypocrites? Show me the coin you used for the tax. When they handed him a small Roman coin, he asked them, Whose head is this and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. At that he said to them, Then give to Caesar what is Caesar's, but give to God what is God's. The Gospel of the Lord. The glory due to God. We have been reflecting on recognizing the true authority that underlies all human authority, and that is God. This is the message given by God to Cyrus, king of Persia, you know, through the prophet Isaiah. Yes, Cyrus wielded power and was a good king. In fact, he freed the people of Israel from exile and uh, asked, uh, allowed them to return home and to restore uh, their heritage. You know? But God reminds Cyrus that it was God who has chosen him, who called him, gave him the title, and is at work. And through, through the reign of Cyrus, if it is done in justice, fairness, and respect for people, hopefully all the nations may recognize God, who is the source of all authority, and may give glory to God. We have a good example in St. Paul. Although he was not an earthly ruler like Cyrus, he was an apostle. And uh, wow, we can say that as an apostle, he also had some authority and some influence, just like uh, over the Thessalonians. But he was very clear. His gospel came from God. The power of his preaching came from the Holy Spirit. The people formed by his mission is the people of God, not Paul's. So the glory should go to God. Father, Son, and Spirit, and not to the Apostle. Wow. We need this type of uh, humility and this alertness you know, in recognizing where or who is the source of whatever influence or power or authority that I exercise and give the glory where it is due to God. In the Gospel, we find the Pharisees plotting against Jesus. They wanted to trap him. Why? Because uh, if you remember the past Sundays, Jesus tried to expose their weakness as teachers. And somehow Jesus impressed upon his listeners that they should somehow be attentive or critical of the way the Pharisees and the scribes were using their authority. So the Pharisees were probably afraid. No, they were generally good people, but they were quite afraid. You know, this is part of their weakness, afraid of losing their authority in the minds, in the eyes of peoples. So now, with the sympathizers of Herod, you know, they connived in order to trap Jesus. So you have these religious and cultural leaders <laughs> conniving, <laughs> working in tandem with some of the political uh, sympathizers of the regime in order to trap Jesus. And 
you see the combination of the Pharisees and the Herodians uh, would almost alert us to how they want to trap Jesus. It will certainly be about authority. Whether Jesus recognizes both God's authority and human authority. The Pharisees defending God's authority and the Herodians defending human authority, but they wanted to trap Jesus. Is he an observer of the law, both of divine law and of human laws? No, they wanted to trap him. So they asked him a question, you know, uh, is it lawful to pay the tax, you know, to Caesar? Now, being an Israelite, he should be loyal to his people. So, should you pay taxes to an occupying force? You know, that's the, uh, the, the, the human side of it. You know? But the, uh, the, the Pharisees were also quite uh, uh, attentive to how a religious teacher, you know, could be misconstrued or might uh, use religion in order to go against the government. So you see how, how they wanted to trap him. But Jesus saw into their hearts. Jesus saw their bad faith. They were not really interested in uh, this complex religious and uh, civil uh, issue. They were not interested in that. They knew that he knew that they wanted to trap him. And so, wise as he was, filled with the Holy Spirit, he turned the table on them. They were the ones trapped. They wanted to trap him. He trapped them by asking for a coin and said, whose head is here and whose inscription? And they said, Caesar's. And I said, okay. Give to Caesars what is Caesars, and give to God what is God's. Wow. So they were trapped. They didn't know what to accuse him of. But Jesus here was not j just being wise. He turned this situation to a teaching moment. Whose head do you see? In the coin, Caesars. Now, if we ask, where do you see the head of God? Not engraved on a coin. We see God's glory in creation. We see God's glory in other people. And most importantly, he seems to be telling the scribes, the Pharisees and the Herodians, do you see the face of God? in his son, Jesus. Do we see the face of God in Jesus? And do we give to God what is due to God? Faith in his son. This is how to glorify God. Faith in his son. If you give to Caesar what is due to him by returning to him the coin, with his face now. Render to God the homage due to him by putting your faith in his visible face, Jesus. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. Friends, let us continue our reflection on Mary, our mother and teacher. This is the penultimate installment in our series in honor of Our Lady this month of October. 
Discerning and responding to a situation according to its proper context is a lesson from today's gospel. This is also a lesson that we can learn from the way Jesus communicated with Mary, his mother. Based on St. Luke's Gospel, we can say that Mary had a working knowledge of who her son was, the Son of God. And there were signs that followed the angelic annunciation. But as theologians would say, it does not mean that Mary had a full understanding of the mystery and truth of the Son of God growing as an ordinary human being before her eyes. The Gospels point to occasions when Jesus implicitly guided His mother into a fuller understanding of His person. Do you remember when Mary and Joseph found Jesus in the temple after losing Him for three days? Jesus said, It is a very interesting statement. Some would even say Jesus' response was intimidating or even uh, disrespectful. But what is equally important here was Jesus' action, which completed his response. St. Luke wrote that afterwards, Jesus went down with his parents and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. Jesus clearly acknowledged Mary and Joseph their paternal authority and concern. But a sign was also being communicated now that he has entered adulthood according to Jewish customs. In time, he would have to be in Jerusalem to attend to the concerns of the house of his heavenly father because that is a part of who he is. Did you not know as Jesus? Did you not remember what the angel Gabriel had proclaimed? Have you forgotten Simeon's prophecy? Mary pondered this in her heart. And years later, this sign would be realized in Jesus' public ministry as he preached and healed not only in Galilee, but also in Judea, where Jerusalem was. Now, on one occasion during his public ministry, Mary and some of their relatives looked for Jesus. They wanted to speak with him, but Jesus said, Jesus was presenting another sign to his mother and relatives and all the people there, that God's family is not limited to the human concept of family because obedience, following and doing God's will, can admit one to God's family to become Jesus' mother, brother, and sister. And among those people who was the first to follow and do God's will, Mary herself. So Jesus was not brushing off or humiliating his mother who was likely looking for him out of paternal concern, just like when he was 12 years old. But more so now, because he caught the ire of the religious leaders and elders. Friends, when Jesus referred to the people listening to him and doing God's will as his mother and brothers, I invite you to ponder, is this not Jesus' salute to Mary? She became his mother because she believed and obeyed, because she listened to the word spoken to her through the angel. She whose fiat made us God's family in Jesus, God's son and her son. Mary, our mother, please teach us to receive Jesus' guidance and signs that we may understand him. Amen. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how can we avoid making earthly glory superior to God's glory? 
Papano natin maiiwasan na iangat ang kaluwalhati ang makamundo sa kaluwalhatian ng Diyos? The second point is, how can we serve society in the light of God's authority? Papano natin mapaglilingkuran ang lipunan sa liwanag ng kapangyarihan ng Diyos? Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people, so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.